morning and welcome to Winnipeg. Now, I'm guessing it was uh, a little over half an hour ago. I was sitting at my computer and uh, just above my computer is a monitor. Just, just like that. In fact, it's exactly like that. Same make and model. <laughs> And it's just right above my computer monitor. And I'm pecking away answering, uh, answering comments. Like if you send a comment, uh, I just want to let you know, I do read it. And I know that some people, all I do is I just give them a thumbs up. It doesn't mean that I like your comment less than somebody who I, I give a big, long, lengthy reply to. I, I just sometimes I just don't know what to say <laughs> um, yeah so so anyway I'm sitting there and I I noticed that on the time on the bottom of right hand side of the screen it said it gives me the time and I'm noticing it's I'm thinking what well, is it right about right now that the people that we see come across the bridge come across the bridge and so I instinctively looked into the up into the monitor just in time to see them appear off the end of the bridge. <laughs> so they must have a real routine going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, if uh, if it works out, I'll I'll, dub, I'll I will have dubbed it in, and you will have actually have seen it happening. I won't do the full screen thing because uh, <laughs> it wasn't what you would call a spectacular sunrise. Uh, anyway, my hope for today is I want to get the masking tape on these things. Now, I, I know I'll start out in the morning and I'll say something about this is what I want to do today and then the day goes completely haywire and I don't do what I say I'm going to do. Uh, well, uh, I think we will though because uh, I, I can't, I can't uh, glue these on the, the side and they actually go, see, I'll point, I'll point with my brush. Uh, you'll notice there's a, there's a little slot right there in, in the side of the, of the bulkhead. Well, th this little tab that, that the alligator clip is holding onto actually plugs in right there. That's why I was calling it sort of like a balcony. It's, uh, I think we do pl plug in a, either optical units or maybe, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, uh, maybe rangefinders or optical units or something like that get plugged into that thing. Um, if I can find it on the, uh, on, uh, Stefan's drawing, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll dub it in. Uh, some, some places on Stefan's drawing, it's really good and some places it isn't. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, get on with it here today and, uh, see if we can't get re rearranged and, and try and get more things done other than just painting two little bells that you can probably hardly even see in there. Uh. <laughs> okay, now if I keep my part over top of this stain here while I'm working on it, because I am going to be sort of manipulating it around here, trying to get our masking tape around the inside of the splinter rail, uh, then it should stay in the field of view. However, right now I have my 14 30 millimeter uh, wide angle lens on, and that's pretty much as close in as I can get with it. But I, I was thinking afterwards that what I could do here is use the uh, the macro, which is 105 millimeters, and uh, and that way I can have the camera back more out of the way and actually be in closer as far as you are concerned. So I think I'm going to do that. Okay, press the autofocus. Now we're going to uh, stop the lens down for depth of field. We'll go all the way as far as it will go. Which at, in this case is F40. Let's get a little bit more light going on here if we can. Yeah, I think that's going to be alright. Now I'm going to do my best to try and keep everything so that you can see it, but I might have to, you know, be, be twisting this thing around so it's better for me. Uh, I think we can sort of both see it like that. And um, rather than 
cut one long piece of tape that's going to go all the way around. I think what I'm going to do is just have enough that will go from this corner up and around and then do do this this section right here uh, later. I, I, th I think I can line it up. Okay, and I'm just going to get a rough idea here. I think that should be enough. I, I don't want to waste this stuff because as you can see it's uh, I'm starting to run out of it here. Uh, maybe you couldn't see that. Okay, where's my tweezers? Okay. I actually need something else here as well. Maybe I'll use Chris's file because it's handy. Just want to go right up in the, in that corner. Now it has to be reasonably straight. Otherwise. Stick into my fingers here. Okay, now when we get to a corner like this, this is where we can run into problems because it'll it'll come away from the splinter rail, and the uh, spray will. If I use spray, it'll wick its way up. Let's check the monitor. How's that look? You can see it way better than I can. Probably because I got my wrong glasses on. Okay, I think I think that's pretty good. Just just sort of hook this over the edge there. Okay, now let's turn it up like this and get ourselves a short piece. And just kind of get it into the corner if I can. How does that look? I think that's going to be okay. Now, now what I'll do is I'll just go all around the outside with another piece, maybe a wider piece, so I don't need to worry about the overspray, you know, curling around when I'm spraying. And, uh, yeah. Okay, here's my latest thinking on this. It has been my experience that when I have tried to paint into a corner, what happens is the spray kind of builds up a, a pressure right here and it won't let the droplets all the way in. In other words, they, they get eddied off off up over top of the splinter rail or uh, yeah it just doesn't work this <clears throat> I'm sure there's a trick to, to spraying properly into a corner so I'm, I'm thinking that I, I probably went to a lot of well not a lot but some extra work here putting the tape around the the outside and I didn't really need to because I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and lightly paint the deck with a brush um, I don't know if you would call it dry brushing, but uh, it would be, uh, I'm going to try and not soup it on, in other words. And we're going to be using the 77. So, uh, yeah, let's just sort of recompose a little bit here and uh, move in on our deck and try and preserve that nice texture that Trumpeter went to all the work of uh, putting on our on the deck, you know. But once again, we're not going to get close enough to actually see that. But it's, it's sort of nice to know that it's there, right? Okay, I'm noticing that the uh, masking tape is not up against the splinter rail at the top here, but I do believe that down in the bottom where I am poking <laughs> is, is into the corner, I'm pretty sure. 
Uh, I, I don't think there's uh, anything more I can do here. And the, the paint I'm using, the 77 that I'm using, is the uh, paint that has the paint retarder in it and it has been thinned. Now I'm going to try and get, don't want to, I don't want to just sop it on. I'd sooner be able to use uh, a couple of coats here. And I also do, do not want to dissolve the, uh, I think it's the 19. I'm just going to go around the outside first. I'll get just a little bit more here. Now remember we do not want to dissolve the 19. We just want to put it on lightly here. You know, if I if I can see the uh, the the texture of the deck when it's wet, for sure I'm going to be able to see it when it's dry. Okay, now I'm going to maybe have to turn it out of your field of view just a little bit here so I can see this corner here. Sorry about that. Just do all the rest here, just sort of get it on here and and I am listening to see if anybody's yelling at me that I've missed a spot. We may not have to give it a second coat. I'm just sort of working it in here. Like I say, I'm trying to you know, I'm I'm no expert at this, so I'm not trying to teach you anything. I'm just sort of talking as I'm going here. In other words, like it says in the description of my videos, this is not a tutorial. on my brush now to finish it off, at least for the first coat. Okay, how's that look? Is there any bare spots? I'm not really seeing anything. Okay, I think, I think this edge is going to be right up against the, uh, right up against the uh, superstructure. Bulkhead. Okay, now this this tongue it doesn't have to be painted because it's going to be stuck in the deck. Okay, is there any places there that looks a little bit bare? Oh, you know what? I think maybe what's happening right there is uh, when I try to put a little bit more on, it could be that I've dissolved the uh, 19. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to do the other one uh, the, the same way. So uh, I think that went pretty good. Yeah, I'm kind of pleased with that. I did not bother to go around the back of the splinter rail this time. And once again, we are going to try and not flood it on. Hmm. That's maybe a little bit more on my brush than I wanted. And we don't want to scrub off the 19, remember? I'm going to have to turn this a little bit here. You know, it, it could be that I was just sort of over overreacting about the uh, dry brushing business here because this stuff does have a a wonderful property in that it uh, 
shrink wraps well. Okay, now let's remember, don't scrub there again. Wait for the second coat. That's going to have to take it out of your field of view a little bit here. I'm sorry about that. Okay, any bare spots? I don't think so. I don't think so. Unless, unless maybe right here. Mind you, there's going to be a, the base for something goes there anyway. Or actually, the the uh, 20 millimeter anti-aircraft guns they go here and here. I don't know what goes here. Okay, let's not poke at it now. Let's just uh, just leave it. I I think we've. Uh, pretty much got it here. This one may not need a second coat. It doesn't look blotchy. At least not not yet. Maybe it will once it dries. It does seem to be a little bit faint right there, but like I said, I'm not going to mess with it. Well, it didn't take long to get rid of that, did it? Mm. Okay, the problem with pizza day. The pizza's way too small, and it goes down way too fast. Now, what I want to do with, with these little parts here is uh, let that 77 cure. It's only about an hour old here. And, uh, yeah, but maybe I'll give them a second coat later this evening. We'll see how it goes. However, I think we have time to uh, get some some of our small pieces down. We, we made these up, if you remember, and they're all painted. As far as I know, everything now except these pieces that we just painted uh, are ready to stick on. Okay, and if we if we start from left to right, and that's sort of the way I like to go, and that way I miss less, let's put it that way, we're going to be needing these. And uh, I think the thing to do is get these on, and then maybe I should do sort of a, a dry run here and get these on, and then these, uh, these uh, J24s and F7s. Uh, maybe just try and wiggle them into position before I actually glue this these pieces on just in case uh, there's a little bit of manipulating has to be done here uh, <clears throat> okay just let me get organized here okay we need the 39 the 7 and the 24 they all go together on this side and then over on this side their counterparts go. We'll, we'll just do one side on camera. And it looks like it's got to go on something like this. I think there's basically only one way it can go on. Like that. It, it just sort of locks into place there. Alright, now we need to... Well, maybe I should move in just a little bit here. And we got the, the 24. 
Yeah, you can see how that's supposed to go there. Kind of fits into place. Maybe I should have the macro lens on. Let me check the screen. Oh, we're moved in pretty good here. Yeah, that fits all right. And then the the seven. I do believe. Let me just take a look at the manual here. Okay. It has that uh, raised section. I I almost need tweezers to put that on. Where are my rubber tip tweezers? Yeah, maybe we can use Tony's. Try and get it down in there. There's, there's two little holes in there. Probably can't see them. Okay, that, that actually fits quite well. I believe that this is down as far as it will go. Oh, and, and look, there's a, a little notch right there that this is supposed to fit up into. Yeah, that, that's, that's going to fit really good. Maybe we'll, uh, I was going to say slip on the macro lens and move in nice and close, but uh, yeah, let's do that. I mean, that's where we got it, right? Okay, there's been a, you might say, a bit of a change in plans here. And I was trying to decide what, what kind of glue should I use to, you know, glue these on. And I was thinking, well, I'll use something, the thick glue on, on the, for this one. And then probably the extra thin for both of these pieces. And then I was looking at this and I was realizing that this, this uh, deck here, if you want to call it a deck, would not have been light like that. I think it probably would have been dark. This, in other words, the 77, the same as the... Uh, the edge here and so on is um, this this is the 66 okay and uh, yeah the, these are going to go in here and uh, I think that the 77 will be dark enough that these guns will contrast against it so that they, the detail will show up um, but the easiest time so let me get this out of the way the easiest time to, to paint these is before I glue them down because I'll be able to, you know, put them on the rotator and sort of rotate them around and get up to the edge very, very carefully. I, I may not do it on camera for sure. I won't do. I think there's, I think there's six or eight of these things, um, maybe more. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't do all, all of them on camera. Don't worry. But uh, I think that's what we're going to have to set up to do. So we, are, in other words, we are not going to glue these into place right now. Okay, I realize this is a bit of a setback here. We had all these pieces on rotating blocks and then I took them off and if I had a, you know, thought ahead a little bit, I would have realized I should have left them on the blocks, in other words. I don't need to stick them down real, real hard, just, just enough that when I'm brushing I'm not going to knock them off. Okay, what I'm going to try to do here is uh, paint them with without masking the inside. I think that if I'm very careful and can turn the turn the part as I'm coming in with my brush, I should be able to go right up to the splinter wall and not go up the splinter wall. If you know what I mean? At least that's the plan. Okay, I'm finally set up here. I just sort of. You might say doing a dry run here because I want to see if I can very, very steadily move up to the edge here and turn it. Yeah, I think this is going to be okay. So let me move in a little bit here. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I can go up to the edge and around, uh, try and get everything angled so that you can see it and I can see it. Uh, we will put on the macro lens, but that is probably going to be in the next episode. 
So, uh, don't know if there will be an extra tonight. If there is, that's what we're going to be doing. Thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. Or in the next episode. <laughs>